hello and welcome back and today of course I want to talk about the subject of Seagate's rescue service it's this thing that unites on a number of their products you look on the box you look on the website you look on the pages of any of your e-shop and you see this little R with a plus symbol and you wonder one what is it two is it worth it three is it a gimmick and I've talked about it a lot on the channel and I've done testing and stuff a couple of years ago but I still don't think it's something that a lot of people truly understand because in the right circumstances it's genuinely genuinely a game changer and if you're weighing up buying your next hard drive or SSD for your DAS, your NAS, your Thunderbolt, your console, whatever, for a small extra and in some cases completely for free, it is an absolute game breaker of an extra. And today I'm going to tell you four things about it that will hopefully convince you it is what you need to have in your back pocket, but I'm also going to give you four reasons why it might not matter to your setup. So let's crack straight on. That is right. The first thing, it isn't just a simple software recovery. The word data recovery has been thrown around a lot online. And when it comes to getting recovery and you look at data recovery service, I'm sure if you Google it in another tab now, you'll find that there's a lot of software out there that will scan a hard drive, scan an SSD, roll back data. It will look at the contents of a drive and try to recover versionings and stuff like that. Now, that is a form of data recovery, I'm not going to deny it. However, whenever you see really, really expensive uh, data recovery services or people talking about forensic level data recovery services, one of the biggest and most complex operations for recovery is known as logical failure or mechanical failure. That is physical damage to the system. Now that can be done a number of ways from environmental damage to just surrounding ambient damage and things being dropped all the way through to a power surge frying part of the system. Your data is on the drive but you can't interface with the drive and in that scenario that is when you go down the mechanical route and again the rescue recovery service this is why it's a game changer because it includes it. A lot of people when they look at data recovery services and again this isn't for everyone but when it comes to logical failure, and that's when a drive breaks, but your data is inside, it's still on the platters, this is included in that service. So again, if you're going to be running um, drives in you know higher, lower temperatures, you're going to be running these systems in, you know, not war-torn areas or you know on the road, something where there can be environmental hazards, having mechanical failure recovery options built into your purchase is not a bad thing indeed. Next up, I want to talk about the method of recovery, because obviously they go down mechanical fail uh, recovery failure there. They've got data centers. They take drives apart and then go for bit by bit, block by block recovery. But what I'm talking about now is how you get the data back. Now, this will differ depending on everything from USB drives to N2 NVMEs and hard drives. But when you get your data back, it is delivered in the following forms. Normally, you get all three, but that does depend on the methodology and the hardware that you are getting the recovery from. So first up, you get a USB drive with your data on it. Now, whether that's an external drive, whether that's the SSD, they give you an external drive, generally via USB, that will have all of your data on it that they've managed to recover. The second thing they give you, if you're still within your warranty period, is another drive. So if you get a drive like the three-year Seagate Iron Wolf series that's got three years of data recovery and three years of warranty, when that drive, if, you know, if that drive does fail, as these things can, one, you get your external drive for your data on it, and you get a replacement drive under your warranty. And the third thing they give you is access for 60 days to that data on the cloud as well. So you get three copies, uh, sorry, uh, you get two copies of that data back for you to access, as well as the original hardware that failed. And again, in most cases, the recovery, the rescue recovery service is included with the drive. It's an absolute no-brainer. Third thing people are less aware of is you don't have to only get drives that have got rescue built in. Now, this does create a kind of ambiguous line there between Seagate products and non-Seagate, but lots of websites, including Amazon, allow you to add this service to an existing drive. So just because 
you might not want to buy the Seagate drive because maybe stock is less available or the pricing isn't to your liking, you can still get that Rescue Plus service bolted on. Prices range, you know, for as little as a few dollars, I think about eight to ten dollars for an add-on that goes on for a few years there. And again, you've heard already some of the things that are covered by it, which if they are appropriate to your setup, and we will get on, don't worry, to setups that this isn't appropriate for, it just seems like a, an easy cert choice there, whether you're getting it included within the cost of the price or it's something you're choosing to spend a few knicker on as an extra. And the last thing is the recovery process itself, because one of the things you find with enterprise level data recovery services, and again, we've got a whole series on this that we've worked with a couple of double, uh, data recovery services down on the south coast of England, that this content is at about 60% done. Hopefully that video is going to come before the summer. Um, this, when you do go to these uh, forensic level, you know, logical, mechanical level data recovery companies, not only do they charge an extensively enormous amount of money for it because it's such a long job that requires hours and hours and hours and hours of professional um, input, but on top of that, getting updates can be problematic. Finding out the status of the drive, the status of recovery, that kind of stuff, because you're dealing with people that charge so much and it is such a hands on operation, generally, Getting information and updates on where you are in the process is long and arduous. And again, this is something when we did our testing of the recovery services uh, a couple of years ago, the Seagate process online and their online rescue portal has email updates, has alerts. It changes throughout the course of that recovery process. It's not just we've received your drive we've sent you what data we can recover. There is lots of updates in between and you can sign up for a lot of those updates too. A number of users, when they got this service and tried to sign up for it, didn't realize that a few of them were already signed up by default with the device because of the serial it's linked to. That's not universal and you should always check in advance, but that background service and updates on when you do take advantage of this recovery, if you need it, is still gonna be a lot of peace of mind. Now, again, the rescue recovery service is not for everyone. There are times and means when it is not going to be appropriate to you. So we're going to go through four reasons why you might not really care about the rescue service. That's right. One of the most concerning elements of data loss in the last year or so that is growing in frequency is ransomware attacks. And unfortunately, for the most part, this rescue recovery services, uh, the rescue recovery services, they're not going to help you. When it comes to ransomware, the bulk of ransomware attacks are stationed around the idea that your system is gained hold of, an encryption, or just basically zipping it all up, all of your files, into little zipped up versions of themselves with a brand new uh, prefix there, a format on the end, is created, a key, uh, which would unencrypt them is deleted from the system and you have to pay this nefarious third party to give you the key to unlock your files now recovery isn't going to work in this instance because you can't the data is still there and it's been changed on an encrypted bit by bit level now had it been deleted Recovery can help you. Malware can sometimes do that, and then you'll be able to roll that back. But rescue recovery services will only work if you have versioning or snapshots there in the background that can be referred back to, and even then on a Linux level. So if you're considering the rescue recovery service to protect you from ransomware, it's not really going to be any use to you. Now, this is something I probably should have gone into more detail on when I made my slightly comedic video where I messed up a hard drive and sent it to Seagate there. When it comes to the um, reconstruction of the data on the disk, intentional damage isn't going to help. If you've got a hard drive there that's got a nail plunge through it, they're not going to give you the time of day. If you've got a hard drive there that's been steamrolled or a hard drive that smells of bacon and it's been burnt, they're not going to touch it. It comes down to unintentional damage. So again, if you've got an ex that's got real anger at you and messed up your PC with a baseball bat, I don't think you're going to be covered. But in the event of natural flooding, in the event of fire, things that aren't your fault, these are things that you're probably covered by and their terms and conditions is a lot more detailed than you might think. 
this is a big one and I think this is something I think Seagate could stand to be a little louder about and that is in the event of raid recovery data recovery services are going to be less useful to you at least within this context of a single drive scenario to put that into perspective take example this four bay NAS system here now if I took advantage of a raid five that means I've got one disk of parity. When the data is being written across these disks, parity is being written with every wave of data. If one of these drives dies and I want to take advantage of the recovery services, it's not going to be foolproof because they'll try to recover all the data on the disk, but parity data and that RAID data is very, very delicate. And unless 100% of that data has been recovered, chances are, even if they recovered, a huge amount of the data that's on a drive that was the a one disk of a RAID failure selection there, it's not going to be enough. And the RAID, if it does get rebuilt, may have silent data corruption there in the background because that is one drive that's like a, part of a larger RAID configuration. Now, it's worth bearing in mind, I presented there a one disk drive failure where, again, even if you weren't going to take advantage of the recovery services, you'd still have RAID, buy a new drive, slam it in. What if this was a 6 or an 8 bay that had a RAID 5 and we lost two drives and therefore RAID recovery was not possible? That means you'd have to send two drives out for RAID recovery and even if most of the data is recovered on both or one of them, it's not going to be enough and your RAID is still not going to be recoverable there overall. So do bear in mind that the recovery services should only be considered towards a single disk environment. It's not impossible that they can be useful in a RAID recovery setting, but the likelihood of recovery is so small that I wouldn't consider it a viable safety net long term. And finally, let's talk about that recovery there, because again, Seagate haven't been secretive about this, but I think it's something a lot of people don't highlight. The odds of recovery are not 100%. Generally, Seagate um, publicly state, it's a, they say, and they're quite pleased with, 95% recovery rates there. Now, that sounds really, really good, but bear in mind that 95% has two main shortfalls in a more general sense. First and foremost, you might be trying to recover the data from a drive, and there's a specific piece of data that you need to be recovered. It might be very, very small, or worse, very, very big, a big old chunk of sequential data. So the second thing is, you might get 95% recovery, but that file that could be 10 meg, could be 100 gig, could be a terabyte, that one big file, it might be 95% of that file it could be 95 percent of an installation consequently it might not run it might be completely compromised it might be an image that's got chunks taken out of it it might be a video file that's lost its and not running properly it could be any manner of things so if you are looking at the recovery services don't forget 95 percent they're not a hundred and it's not 95 percent of your files in most cases so if you have 100 files exactly 95 will be fine it's 95 percent of the aggregated data and data can be spread across a disk again maybe you're lucky enough to do regular defragmentation even then doesn't prevent it but do bear in mind 95 percent but this has been four reasons why data recovery services and the rescue services that are included with Seagate drives are a bloody good thing and four reasons why it might not be applicable to you and your setup. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, click like. It helps me understand what I'm doing right and click subscribe to learn more as we cover the subject of storage with a video every single day and do take advantage of the free advice section over on NAS Compares linked in the description. Genuinely free. It's made by two humans, me and Eddie the web guy. We don't do anything with your email and it's completely unbiased. We'll tell you what's the best for your setup and then it's up to you thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time